Thanks very much uh, to Chris and Alex. I think they did a phenomenal job, and they are very representative of what our programs intend to do with students, and then also give them pathways to their future. You know, we live in exponential times, and uh, these students are great examples of, of what we seek to accomplish with the, with the children we work with. Joining us today is uh, Representative uh, Chris Murphy, and he'd like to say a few words to us. Thank you.
in the world with respect to our workforce. We still are the place that innovators want to make their products. Uh, and, and if we can recapture that market innovation, if we can train a whole new generation of scientists and researchers and engineers, um, that's where I think the new foundation of our economy comes. Um, and so that happens in a number of different ways. At the federal level, it, it, it's a policy of trying to essentially make innovation free, allowing tax incentives to flow to the folks that are creating those new technologies. But at the, uh, at the, at the elementary and secondary education, it involves trying to inspire children uh, to enter into those professions and to take an interest in those subjects at an early age. And that's why um, right now, federal government is really in the process of reaching out and trying to, to build new models. Maybe it's, it's not experimentation, but it's a, um, an attempt through these I-3 grants to go out and seed projects uh, like this um, that can maybe become the industry standard in our educational field moving forward. And so um, I, I don't mean to put too much responsibility <laughs> on your shoulders, uh, but this is a big deal. This is a big deal because it's, it, it, it's at the same time about the uh, the hundreds, probably thousands of kids who are going to come through this programming um, and, and maybe be re-inspired and re-energized about learning. But it's the, it's the development process that you're all going to go through, certainly in the first few years of the project, but I would imagine through the entire five years, that is going to, I think, educate the decisions we make as a Congress going forward in the future. The idea is that we survey the landscape of the projects that are funded through these grants, and then we start to, to, to pick the ones that work the best, um, that, that have the best outcomes, um, and then we make sure that federal funding from there on out flows to the projects that rose to the uh, top of the hill. Um, and so we have an ability to be one of those model um, programs uh, here, and, and much of that is uh, dependent upon what you make of uh, this unprecedented amount of funding that's coming um, through to uh, center to Education Connection and, and to the Academy. So um, that's a, a, a long way uh, of saying thank you for putting yourself in a position to be the recipient of this grant um, and, um, and to tell you how excited I am to watch this grow, uh, to see your progress, uh, and to hopefully take um, this wonderful entity that you are willing to build and give the benefit of to our students uh, and tell your success story around the country. So congratulations. I want to thank Congressman Murphy for taking time out of his schedule to come visit with us. I'm, I know you have to be on your way at some point, so uh, we thank you for joining us today. So uh, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the Academy, the model of what it is, but also I'd like to talk a little bit about the culture behind the Academy too. So throughout the presentation I'll share with you some student experiences and, and we'll talk a little bit about how the Academy impacts students so we can think about the value of it, while also talking about some of the nuts and bolts of how to implement it within our partner schools. So again, I'm Frank LaBanca. I'm going to be the director of the Academy. And I'm actually relatively new to Education Connection. Only two months ago, I was in the classroom. I was the science department chair at Oxford High School. And for those of you that don't know, Oxford High School Five opened uh, just four years ago. It was uh, the, uh, the most recent single high school in a town was open 35 years previously. So uh, that was New Fairfield High School, which I'm actually uh, an alumnus of that school. But um, Oxford High School, new school, really focused on innovation. And we actually partnered with Education Connection in the process. Well, this grant we're talking about, we hear I-3, the term I-3. I-3 is a federal program known as Investing in Innovation. They are the funders of the project. It's the US Department of Education. We have many partners in the academy, including the College of Technology, Southern Connecticut State University, CPAP, EDC, our research partners, the State of the Connecticut, the Department of Education, as well as the Office of Workforce Competitiveness. This is a collaborative effort that the center is spearheading. I want to share you a few stories along the way too. These are actually some of my students and I as a teacher at Oxford High School and previously at Newtown High School actually participated in 
CCC, Center for 21st Century Skills Programming. And, and I'd like to share a story about some of my students to really give you a sense of how this, these programs impacted me personally and my students as well. One of the programs we participated in was called the KSAR. It was an academy for science and research, which is going to be incorporated in a sense in our capstone experience here. And I had a, a number of students that would conduct extended projects, research-based, science-based projects. One of my students, Joe, uh, conducted a project and he you know, how to find something, find that passion, something that sparked him to understand and think about science in a different, innovative way than the teacher in the front of the room, direct instruction, and even maybe that laboratory experience that's compartmentalized. So Joe did some reading and he found out that there was uh, an issue with arsenic and water in India. He had some family connections with family members that worked in India and he decided to pursue a method to try to remediate arsenic out of water. And he designed and built a two-step filter, two-compartment filter that actually filtered water and remediated arsenic. And it was iron-based and carbon-based and he uh, designed this filter, built it and tested it and actually it was about 99% effective in it's, it's efficacy. He presented this project at the Connecticut Expo, and that's an event, it's an innovation exposition that takes place each year in May where students come together to share their work. He also presented his work at the Connecticut Science Fair, and his work was recognized by the Water Environmental Federation. Uh, Water Environmental Federation is actually the organization that cleans your water. They're, you, they're your sewage treatment plant operators. And, and they recognize also the, the important and innovative needs for water strategy remediation because drinking water is a very necessary and important part of our everyday lives. Well, his project was recognized and uh, his project was taken to the national competition. And uh, he and he was paid an all expense paid trip to go to St. Louis. And you know what, his teacher actually got to go too. So uh, he, Joe and I went out to, uh, to St. Louis and he presented his research there. But really the back story behind this project is that only three years prior, Joe was in a classroom outside of the mainstream classroom because he was not capable of operating in a, in a traditional classroom setting. He had special needs that required special remediation. And when Joe was given an opportunity to learn through a project-based method where he could engage his hands, he could engage his mind, and focus around something that he was passionate about, it, he excelled to levels that no one thought he could to. And I think that really gets at the heart of what our programming is about here at the Center for 21st Century Skills. It's about engaging students in new and innovative ways. Well, we're going the wrong way. So what is fundamental to the courses that come as part of the academy? Well, first of all, we have a blended learning environment. And we say blended learning environment, we leverage the power of the classroom teacher and the student. You see, that's a critical component. We are not a distance education program. We have students and teachers that work very, very closely together utilizing digital resources in a way that enhances learning. And not only do we use our digital resources, I'll get the click right eventually, but we, we have experiential components in our blended environment. And those experiential components get students together with each other from diverse backgrounds. They pair students with mentors and professionals in the community that do this real technology, this real science, this real mathematics, <laughs> this real engineering. So they have experiences in the real. We engage them in digital portfolios so they leverage the technology again to store their work, to have representative authentic work in what they do, and they, they can take that with them when they leave us. In addition, we have a, a comprehensive challenge project that is part of the academy, a long-term project where students have a challenge, they follow that challenge out, and they present the results of that challenge at our innovation exposition, which takes place each May. So why don't we take a second now and take a look at 
the Innovation Exposition and see students in action there. See, 